Okay, now I know what I said about that the next video would be, uh... Um, about the hardware setup, and the antenna, and the preamp that goes with it, the LNA preamp that I built for it. I know I said all that, but, uh... I can't really do that video until I have daylight, and I'm on my closing stretch at work. So I'm always, uh, either up early in the morning getting ready, or, uh at home in the dark this time of year. So that's going to wait a little bit. And I'm instead going to teach you how to signal hunt. For those of you not used to looking, hunting down interesting signals, uh, maybe you've never done it or maybe you have not done it enough, I'm going to try to teach you a couple of tricks that I use and have used for many, many, many years. Uh, to help me find interesting things. And it really boils down to two things with these SDRs. Um, first off, sorry my allergies are kicking my ass all of a sudden, but let's work around that. Use it! Anyway, uh, you have two fantastic weapons with an SDR for signal hunting. First off, obviously, the waterfall. This is your absolute prime weapon in finding a signal. Uh, also, to an almost equal extent, the spectrum display uh, for the tuner, and again, f to an almost equal extent, the audio, believe it, audio, believe it or not, I meant to say, the audio waterfall is very important uh, when defining a mystery signal. Like, here, watch this, show you something click smack on that and this is what I always use to signal spot is CW and I always have used it where I could because CW is the most effective mode for determining whether or not a signal is a dead carrier or has information and it doesn't matter whether it's amplitude modulated, FM modulated, um, uh, weird, you know, digital modes and stuff like that, sideband, it doesn't matter. CW will tell you very quickly what you're dealing with. Uh, so what I do with the SDR, what I used to do, let me tell you this first, what I used to do back in the day when I had a, uh, my brand new uh, AR8200 Mark II from AOR, Back in the day, uh, I used to sit up late at night, well, lay down late at night, with one hand on the radio, uh, on the tuning wheel, and in CW mode with a, I forget what step I used to use, like 5 hertz or 10 hertz or something like that. Uh, maybe it was more than that, it was probably more like 100. I would slowly roll forward and use my ears and listen for something interesting. And when I hit something with modulation, I might jump it back into AM or uh, sideband. But, you know, with CW, you don't really need the sideband modes anyway. You just tune off to one side or another, and you can translate sideband, whether it be upper, lower, or double. Not a problem. And in fact, if you zero beat, you can listen to AM transmissions fairly well. Now, okay. With these SDRs, this is an entirely different critter. Look at this here. Because you have this, uh, <laughs> what amounts to a mega band scope, um, and you'll notice I'm like 4.455 megahertz here, and 4.555 over here. I'm very zoomed in, very tight. But if I zoom that out, this is where an SDR really blows my mind. Look at this. 4 megahertz here, 5 megahertz here. You're looking at 1 megahertz of bandwidth there and everything in between. So you can take a whole band and, and spot everything all at once. And right off the bat, let me show you here. This is an amplitude modulated very strong commercial broadcasting station and you can tell because you know it's jumping up and down it's got a rhythm that's the audio music or voice doesn't really matter it all uh, has a rhythm that's very easily spotted and the uh, you can see the sideband information to either side the frequency 
of the audio impressed causes side deviation just like amplitude does uh, in an FM transmission frequency causes deviation to the side in an amplitude transmission um, this is interesting here notice this one only just kinda came out of nowhere and I don't see any ballooning of signals to the side of it so I don't think that was a propagation swell I think that was just a momentary audio transmission on a carrier that's weird. I kind of want to pay attention to that one now. I'll try to make a mental note rather than waste time on it, because uh, there are other things I want to show you. Uh, 4.764. And there's other... other modulation on that. Eh, interesting. Anyway, ignoring that for the moment, look at this. Now, in all this mess, this is obvious, but none of the rest of it really is except for this, which is very pulsed. And uh, these two, notice that these lines here are very monotonous, uninteresting. This one is showing signs of propagation fade in and fade out, but it's not really what I would call interesting. It just looks like a carrier that's... Uh, suffering the wrath of the conditions but these guys here look how colorful that is usually how a signal will appear when it's amplitude modulated but not as strong as this beast over here when they're faint they look like this that's got audio information on it I'd be willing to bet you and this bugger that's very on off very on off pulse 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 notice that down there see it I'd be willing to bet you that's a data uh, some kind of digital mode let's find out um, your main weapon other than visual with the spectrum and the waterfall is your ears always your ears rely on your ears you can move through a mess like this very quickly if you click and click and click that's the glory of the SDR that's where it excels uh, versus regular radios is your ability to use your eyes and your ears as a combined force so, so unmute this have a listen first off I'm gonna prove myself right let's click on this guy as tight to center as I can get away with and you can hear there's amplitude modulation in that and now on the audio waterfall you can see the carrier the center portion of the radio signal and to the side the uh, audio information is causing that carrier to deviate into the sidebands standard AM transmission now uh, where did that guy go this has got my curiosity here click that and I was right it's not a fluctuating carrier it is a complicated data transmission this is WOL it's a maritime broadcast of some sort I don't know a whole lot about it but it always transmits W O L and Morse and then these data pulses of some kind I don't know exactly what that is I thought maybe it was Sator A or something, but I haven't had any luck decoding it. I don't know what I'm doing. A lot of this stuff I do, a lot of it I don't. Um, and so anyway, there, right here, see, again, very colorful. What does that tell us, kids? Oh, don't tell me I just won the lottery. Ha ha ha! This is exactly what happened last night. If I'm right, let's zoom way on in. Nice and tight. Hear that? Chuck, 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 chuck. Oh, yes, it is. There's another one for my records. This is a sync pulse right here. Sync tone. And the rest of it is data. 
This is a HF fax transmission in lower sideband. Oh, hell yes. So you click right about there. Yeah, very nice. I'm gonna log that one down. That's my second kill on uh, on HF fax to date with the SDR. I used to love decoding this stuff. It was so much fun. When I first discovered what it was, I was like, dude, no way! That is so cool. And it's actually very easy to decode. Just need, you know, a program like Multi-PSK, a uh, little audio manipulation add-on like virtual audio cable. You tell um, Multi-PSK to look at virtual audio cable as its source. You tell HDSDR to use virtual audio cable as its output, and the rest is a no-brainer. It's really easy. You just let Multi-PSK do what it does. There are other programs, but yeah, see that there on the audio waterfall? That's your picture data. These are usually wave height maps, weather maps, sometimes satellite images of, uh, of key weather areas, uh, hurricane alerts, that sort of thing. It's a lot of fun to decode this stuff. Really requires a good, strong signal, which I don't have at the moment. But, uh, yeah, it's fun to play with. So, yeah, see, there's a really good example of how just, you know, using your ears, using your eyes, using the tools that God and the program gave you to bump along and find things rapidly. All I had to do was click that sucker in CW after noticing that it had a pattern to it. Uh, well, wrong signal. After noticing that it was pattern, but, you know, I really didn't know what I had. It looked to me like just a regular uh, amplitude modulated broadcast, like, you know, some church or God knows what in the world. I had no idea it would be... Uh, uh, HF fax, and I'm very, very thrilled with that. That's another score for the collection. Yes! This is interesting here. This is intermittent voice. I might try playing with that too. But yeah. Now, you know, I want to point out just very quickly before I wrap this up that, you know, this is HF, this is shortwave radio. And you may be watching this video thinking, well, what do I do on other places like VHF and UHF and the low microwave? And, uh, you know, I'm looking for public service in my area. It's the same difference. It really, truly is. Use your eyes and your ears. Use the waterfall. Look for things that aren't just simple flat lines. Use look for colorful lines, look for uh, broken lines, look for signals that have some kind of vibrance to them on that waterfall, and then use, I'm not kidding you when I say this, use CW mode or upper or lowest sideband, smack that signal with it, listen to what you hear. An FM signal will still have a tone, especially when they're quiet, uh, when nobody's speaking of, to an FM radio, what is the signal? It's a carrier. There's no deviation happening. So your, uh, so your CW mode will give you a tone. When they begin to speak, it'll deviate, and you'll hear that with your ears. All you gotta do is zoom way out and go click, click, click and you can nail down every single interesting signal on this mess in a relatively short time. This is a lot of data here, but you can tell, you know, what to skip just by looking at it, pretty much. A lot of radio listening like this, hunting, band hunting, is um, patience, you know, kind of put yourself in uh, LE airway mode from contact and just kind of, you know, lose yourself in the signals. Listen to washing machines and crap like that. <laughs> and uh, and kind of just let your mind and your ears drift into what you're hearing against the noise. And let your eyes pick that 
visual apart and ask yourself, does that look like just a fading in and out carrier or a steady carrier or is there something more going on there? And you'll surprise yourself, I think, a lot of the time as you uh, get more and more used to it. Um, but yeah, band hunting on any band is the same deal. Put yourself in CW mode and hit every line you see up on uh, 450 megahertz or, uh, or 144 through 148 for VHF, uh, VHF high uh, amateur radio. Look at this here. That strikes me. Oh, yeah, of course it strikes me as a uh, sideband, because it is. That's the 75-meter handband there. See, you know, you learn by eye. And that's a strong signal. That's a good hit. Um, you learn by eye over time basic transmission types. And uh, thank God for these new toys. Boy, SDRs and the programs that go with them are astonishing. But do that. Put yourself, put your radio in CW mode, your SDR, and try it up on 850 megahertz. Hit every little line that you see. Right away you're going to know uh, what most of the active transmissions are because they will be intermittent, like this guy is here. And, uh, and the ones that you're not sure, like, you know, you see something like this up there, click it in CW. Right away, you're going to be able to tell, even if it's a very faint signal, you're going to be able to tell that it's got modulation of some kind on it. You'll know. And then you just work on signal strength, antennas, and, uh, and logging frequencies. <laughs> very important. Stuff like that. That's the basics of it, kids. I hope uh, that somewhere in this I, you learned a little something that you didn't already know. I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope it wasn't frustrating. I hope I was clear enough and all that. And I hope that I spread the bug to you a little bit because radio, to me, has always carried a magical fascination. I think it always will. Um, it's just, you know, I, I was born for it. I was built to process radio on a level that approaches something like understanding the personality of a good friend. You know, to me, I have, I don't know, it's hard to, hard exactly to put it into words, but I, me and radio are old friends, and... I think we will grow old together, and I will never really lose that fascination. And I hope that some of you out there can feel that for yourselves. And radio science is amazing, really. There's hardly any limit to what you'll find out there. If you look long enough, you'll find something maybe nobody else has, or cover the same ground other people have. But what matters is what it means to you. And, uh, and with that, um, let's wrap it up. And, uh, thank you for watching. And see you next time. And next time I will, in fact, run you through the, uh, hardware setup and the, uh, antenna setup, what I've done, what, what, I, what little it really comes to. It's just a mag loop on a preamp, but yeah, you know, it's also a compact setup that works well in subdivision. I had to do something unique, more or less unique, so I did what I could, and believe it or not, it worked out well. So, ooh, here, a parting shot. Let's give you some... Let's give you some 80 meters nonsense. I think I got it right there. Well, I don't know. I've seen uh, stuff on the Easter Island as far as uh, documentaries and there we are. where the people went and all Easter, that. Easter, <laughs> yeah, where did the people went? Anybody. Where did the people go on Easter Island? Anybody? Anybody? They ate each other. Look it up. It's horrible.
They weren't rescued in UFOs. They freaking cooked each other in campfires. That is human de-evolution at its finest. They stripped their island bare in order to compete with each other, and then they ran out of food and resorted to cannibalism. Horrible story. Anyway, thanks, guys, for bringing that up. It's not my fault. Anyway, yeah, so there's 80-meter uh, ham. These guys spend their days talking about Easter Island. <laughs> well, some of them uh, migrated out of off the island, I hope, before the real shit hit the fan. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. See you next time, and uh, stay safe, stay warm or cool, depending on your preference, and uh, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye for now.